How's it going, everyone? It's a new week, and kudos to you for paying attention that it's Monday, and normally we don't have the show. This show, of course, is CCM Live. My name is Marcus. I am your humble host. Look, my mom gave me a thumbs up. Thanks, Mom. <laughs> it's great to be with you, uh, where we get together a few times a week, and we talk about Christian music, and we talk with artists. We talk with you. Um, and this is a fully interactive show, so uh, just like I was able to put my mom's little comment up there, why don't you put your comment up there? And you know what? Even better, hit that share button. Uh, if you don't know what it looks like, just look around until you see a little arrow and there's the word share by it. Once you click that, you can go find individual people to invite to the broadcast and you can welcome them and have them participate. Um, this is, yeah, that's what makes it great. Look, look, all the waves. Hi, Brandon. Hi, Sarah. Look at that. See, Micah's got his eyeballs out. This is great. Uh, we're watching your comments. Of course, if you have any questions for our guests, put those in. I'm watching them the whole time. Um, like I said, we, we get together a few times a week, talk about Christian music, and uh, we also save these. We're on YouTube. We're on ccmmagazine.com and, uh, and iTunes, uh, where we, we keep these, these episodes going. Yes, Giovanna, I totally agree with you. She says, this is going to be so cool, and it is, and we're going to get right to it. Uh, my guest today... Uh, is an awesome singer, songwriter, uh, student, um, worship leader, so many different things, and all around human being. Uh, you probably know her song, Warrior, which just uh, not terribly long ago was blowing up radio. Uh, she's now got a new Christmas EP, and you know what? Tis the season. We're in that zone, everybody. Ready or not, here it comes. And uh, let's welcome my friend, Anna Kerr. Yay. Hello. <laughs> oh, we can't hear the cheers, everyone. So you've got to you got to do the emojis and, and all those things. Imagine so that. yes, imagine those. <laughs> it's good to see you. This good is awesome. You, Marcus. Thanks for having me. Yes, last I saw you, you were at the ASCAP Christian Songwriting Awards. What were you doing there? So I was um, receiving an award for a song that I wrote with Matt Marr called Your Love Defends Me. Um, and every year ASCAP honors some songs. And so that was one of the songs that they honored. And it was so cool because I had never received any award before for songwriting or anything I've done with music. So it was really cool. And it was fun to see you there too. Yeah, it was, was way cool. <laughs> it was, it was the, it was the, uh, you know, dresser, the, uh, what the red carpet dress rehearsal for the doves the next night it was they were yes. just making sure that I could do it you know before they turned turned me loose so it, it went well thanks to you so I'm glad you passed uh, the <laughs> <laughs> so a lot of Matt Marr fans probably don't know that um, that you co-wrote that song which of course did incredibly well for him and um, how in the world did you get hooked up with him to like what a cool cool thing like he's such an accomplished singer songwriter and artist you know like yeah. it's, it's amazing yeah it was so cool we were on a tour together and um he asked me if i would ever want to write and so i said yes and we got together and the whole song came out in about an hour and a half so wow it was kind of one of those like sessions where it just flowed and we really felt like we had so much inspiration and um yeah. it was just special i remember also hi morgan Thanks. Hi Morgan. <laughs> don't don't get a bad grade because of us. We, yes, we, we it'll only be thirty minutes and then you go right back to. <laughs> <laughs> we, I mean, this episode just doesn't it doesn't count as a as a teacher's note. But you can try. You can you try. Can, yeah. yeah. Okay. Is it a Christian university that might help? So. <laughs> <laughs> so. <laughs> now, uh, actually, the real way that we start these interviews is by asking you because everybody comes in from a different room or space or whatever to grab an object, something around you, some random object that, that will tell you, tell us a little bit more about you. What's okay. something around you? 
Let's see. All right. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to stand up and grab this. That's right. Some people have completely left the room and disappeared for minutes on end. So this is, this is just fine. Okay. Well, first I should say that I am in my room, which might be weird, but um, I'm in my apartment. I live on campus at Belmont. And nice. I, have, I have a lot of things in my room. And really, this part is clean. But um, yeah. that's it, pretty much. So anyways. That's, okay. <laughs> that sounds like a college room. Here is a uh, a thing that tells you more about me. I've got oh, my family, I've got my friends, buddies. family down here, friends that's around awesome. here, and Bible verses. So that's what I look at every day when I sit oh. in my bed for hours. So that's awesome. So you live on campus. That's uh, how how does how is that? Is that good? Is it hard to focus? Like I would imagine, with all the different things you do, it would be incredibly <laughs> hard to focus because you'd be like, oh yeah, let's go, let's go get a pizza or let's go like, you know, like, is it hard? Yeah. Is it hard to focus? I mean, it kind of is, but it's honestly really nice because I'm close to everything. So I can just walk to class. I can walk to a coffee shop. I can just get yes. places pretty quickly and parking on campus is horrible. So I never have to park. It's really nice. But I am a senior this year and not a lot of seniors live on campus. Yeah. yeah. Um, but I'm living with some of my best friends and we're having such a good time. It's been really fun. And Belmont's a great campus to live on because you're just so close to everything in Nashville. So I really enjoy yeah. it actually. Yeah. That's nice. So good. what are you studying for those who don't know? Yeah. So I am a Christian leadership major, which is basically um, if, if someone were to major in ministry. So I kind of have a survey of all the places you could go with ministry. So I, I take classes about preaching, about worship leading, about, um, nonprofits and social justice, um, counseling. So kind of just like an overview of different places I could go with ministry. Um, and it's been really great because I feel like I really have only known a lot about worship leading, but now I feel like I know a lot about a lot of different places that the Lord is using, you know, people in ministry. So it's been really cool and I've learned so much. I've written a lot of papers, but it's been good. <laughs> yeah, man, so senior, the end is, is in sight. How is There's a light at the end of the tunnel, Marcus. Yeah. Yay. <laughs> is, that, is that this spring? Yes, I graduate nice. in May. Hopefully. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, how, how have the, the studies like really helped you as far as what you do in the music sphere and writing and all these things? Like, have they complemented each other? Actually, yeah. And I think at first I, I didn't know how they would interact with each other. Um, but I've actually found that the things I learn in class and what we discuss in class has just really built up my songwriting and my knowledge of the Bible. And it's just been really awesome to see how I've grown as a person in college, but also grown in my faith and also grown as an artist through all of this. And it is hard sometimes like with the schedule and I am on the road a lot and then I'm trying to be in class. But overall, it's been something that I would never trade just because I've learned so much. And um, yeah. it's been really great. And I mean, even like I put out a song a couple months ago called Glimpse. And that was actually the final project for one of my classes. Whoa, so, that's pretty awesome. Yeah, so I um, I had to do this like creative project and turn it in. And that was like my final exam. And so I went into a write and I was like, hey, guys, <laughs> do you guys awesome. want to uh, help me write? song for class and so we did and then it ended up wow. being one of my favorites so i love how that worked out it was uh, really yeah cool. absolutely and it's double dipping too it's like yes, you know exactly. i mean I, what i love about what you're doing is some people are like i don't need to go to school because i've already got a job because clearly you've got a job you're touring yeah. you're writing with people like matt mar and and yet you you see the big the long game the bigger picture as far as you know ministry and, and yeah. sort of what you're called to do what does that what does that look like for you like I mean, is it uh, obviously the recording and, and touring that ministry part of what you do, but is there, is there something else too? Yeah, I think, I mean, going into college, I thought, oh, I'll definitely just do music my whole life. And I think I will definitely in some way, but I also have really grown to love counseling and um, it's just, it's been cool to see how I think God has gifted me in other ways besides just music, but also like I use the things I learn in class in the whole experience of being an artist. You know, 
I talk to a lot of people who are going through really hard things and people share a lot of things with me, which I absolutely love because that's why I do this is to connect with people. And so just having like some tools with counseling and all of that has helped me just love people well and help to guide them to where they need to be and um, just encourage them in the best way that I can. So it's yeah, awesome. it's been cool. And also like, I don't have a plan B, like that's not why I'm in college. It's not because like music is plan A. If it doesn't work out, I'll do plan B. It's just really because I feel like I'm called to do both and I can't really yeah. explain why, but I just know that God has given me opportunities to do both. And I believe that he has been using it and will continue to use it as time that's goes awesome. on. So yeah, we'll see. <laughs> I love that. And, and you still, you look well rested and well. and you're still smiling. So that's, yeah. that's amazing. <laughs> Today I had to do um, some service hours for my class, like one of my senior classes. And so I spent five hours today with the homeless population in Nashville, which is so different than what that's a awesome. typical day looks like for me. But just another way that like my classes have given me an opportunity to do things that are outside my comfort zone and something that like I don't usually do, but it was so incredible and just like I, I wouldn't trade that experience. So I feel well rested. <laughs> yeah. Well, I imagine like it, it's actually a real a real gift, especially for a new artist. Um, yeah. But but really for for any artist who's doing this to have that that sort of like sometimes the way music can be is like whether or not you're looking for it, it can become all about you and what you're doing. And, yeah. and that's a cool like automatic grounding agent that you have there. That's awesome. Definitely. What, yeah. um, what has been uh, some of the highlights for you of the past year? Like obviously you've, you've been doing, it's been a huge year. Yeah. Um, just, yeah. Some of the, some of the big highlights for you. For sure. Yeah. I mean, the ASCAP awards were a huge highlight yeah. just to be there and be with so many songwriters that I love was really awesome. But then also like I've done a lot of writing this year and a lot of recording um, and not a lot of touring, which is different for me. Um, but it's been awesome because I've been able to get so much rest and just really like lean into songwriting and lean into asking the Lord, like, what is it you'll have me to say next? Um, and so also recording is like one of my favorite parts of the whole process. Yeah. Because you watch like this song that you sat in a room for four hours and wrote become something. Yeah. And yeah. you get to have all of these incredible musicians and producers like come in and like put their creativity on it as well. And so it's just been, it's just been a really great year because I've been able to rest, but also like create new things that I'm excited to share. Some things I've already shared, some things coming later. So it's been really sure. Yeah. Well, you've got, speaking of creating new things, of course, you've got a Christmas EP that has come out, Christmas Eve in Bethlehem. How does one, how does one go about making a, you know, a Christmas project when, you know, there's, there's so much out there and there's, and, you know, like many times you're doing it the summer. Like how, how did you go about this going, I'm going to, I'm going to do something different. Like, what yeah. did you, what did you go into it with? Well, it was difficult. I will say, like you said, there's so much out there. There's so much Christmas music and yeah. it's hard to do something new for Christmas because there's so many legendary songs out there um, and you don't want to try to do something to beat them because you just can't, you know, yeah. um, in a lot of cases, you just can't. And so it was really exciting, but very challenging, but I enjoyed it. Like we did record it in the summer. So I yeah. definitely <laughs> had to get in the Christmas spirit when it was like a hundred degrees outside. Yes. Um, but it was, so, it was so fun. Like we were literally singing about winter wonderland and then I walk outside and I'm sweating, but <laughs> it was really fun. And then the other thing too, is I kind of just wanted the album to be a compilation of what Christmas has been for me my whole life and just kind of, share that with people and say like here's like a glimpse into what Christmas is like for me and I hope that this brings you into that and so we put all elements that like are important to me like we put jazz on there so we brought in nice. incredible jazz musicians and they played and they just like made these songs absolutely beautiful in so many ways that I couldn't have even expected like it was just amazing um, and then I wrote two songs and so both of those songs are kind of just like encompassing how I feel at Christmas, which I just love the simplicity of the Christmas message. And so Emmanuel, one of the songs is very simple. It's very like restful. 
um, peaceful. And that's kind of what Christmas has always felt like for me. And then the other song, the title track, Christmas Eve in Bethlehem, is really just asking, like putting myself in the Christmas story and asking, like, what would I have done if I was there? And then at the end of the song, coming to the realization that like we are in the story because we have a choice to let the Lord into our lives and celebrate him every Christmas. And so just kind of allowing us to like step into the story and wonder what it would have been like if we were there and then realizing that we are there every day. I yes, that. I would love to learn how to jazz dance, Casey. Casey, <laughs> Casey wants to jazz dance to your album. So. Great. I would love it. Um, please do that. Awesome. Find something special and do a little jazz dance together. And YouTube it. YouTube that action. <laughs> would and love we'll, it. Yes, that's awesome. Um, so with uh, uh, Christmas Eve in Bethlehem, you, like you said, you put yourself in that uh, in in that space. Are there are there any songs that you've heard that really that have done that for you to where you know like any Christmas songs that have really uh, just I don't know transported you to that scene? Some of your favorites? Yes. Okay. So it's funny you ask because last night I was at my parents' house and we were playing games. We love to play games. Yeah. And um, my mom was like, hey, play Casting Crowns album, Peace on Earth, the Christmas album they released. Yeah. And, yeah. It. And oh my goodness, some of those songs still just absolutely like wreck me every time I hear them. Oh, yeah. Um, we were listening yeah. to like While You Were Sleeping. That song is absolutely beautiful. I mean, it does put you right into Bethlehem and then brings it to America, which like is just... Yeah just incredible songwriting like mark hall is such an amazing songwriter I so yeah. i have learned a lot from him over the years not even personally like i have learned personally from him but also just listening to his songs um that whole entire album i think is just a masterpiece and obviously a lot of other people liked it too because i think it's like one of the most popular oh yeah albums ever oh absolutely um, yeah, and it's definitely my favorite. I listen to it every year. I'll never get tired of it. It's so good. <laughs> so since you've been in the Christmas space for like months now, basically, yeah, you know, definitely. since since recording this, uh, <laughs> are you already decorated? Now I don't see anything, and you don't I have to right. show me the rest of your room. But is it time? Like, or or is, are you waiting till like Friday? Okay, so I'm probably not going to decorate in my room here because my exams end like the first week of December. Oh, yeah. so I'll be home for pretty much the entire Christmas yeah. season. Um, but I will say that my mom has had our house decorated since the day after Halloween. So oh, yes, we are that, that normal. Oh yeah. We're that, up, like, I mean, my mom has like five Christmas trees. She puts one in like every room. Yeah, and my mom too. <laughs> yes. It's this whole process and she loves it. And I love it because every time I go home, it like makes me feel like Christmas. So yes. Oh, I that's it. awesome. Yeah. That's so cool. Say, studies say that people who decorate for Christmas early are happier. Humans. That's right. That is absolutely true. So you need like a wreath or something, just a wreath. Yeah, I know. Just, I know. just to help. It's all bad in here. It's, we're not, <laughs> we're, not so. we're not ready yet. Some yeah. people are like uh, absolutely not ready until Friday, so it's okay. You're you're good. Um, what uh, what about other new music? What uh, or music videos? You know, for the for the current project. What uh, where, where do we stand on on new new stuff? Yes. So I just released a single on Friday. Um, it's called Split the Sea. Split the sea and yes. I've been waiting so long to release this song. I just been like kind of listening to it and just worshiping through it for like over a year. And um, it just came out of like a really difficult time. I was just, I was really stressed and I was on the road and I was going through some weird like health problems and it just felt like there was nothing like getting better. And I just got to this place where I was like, do I believe that God is who he says he is? Like, do I believe that he's the same that he was in Exodus 14 when he split the sea so that right where I said like yes I do believe that and even though I may not see it right now I do believe that God is the God of miracles and he still can do them and it felt like right after I wrote this song and believed it I was healed and I everything felt so much better and I came out of a tough season and he just answered my prayer and yeah so I've just been waiting to tell people about this song and to have them hear it and it's
that's kind of all you can hope for as an artist is just that your music will speak louder than what you can even say and that God will use it to touch the lives of people that you may never meet. And um, it's just been really cool. So I'm excited to have new stuff out there starting with Glimpse a couple months ago. Right. Uh, just released online and everything not to radio or anything because we just wanted to reintroduce people to me because it had been a couple years since i put out an album um and then with split the sea and then there's stuff coming later i'm not sure right. if it's, it's an album i don't know I've single written, at a time is is totally like the way it's going too that's yeah that's, and i've yeah. written like 30 songs in the past year so oh, i have man. a lot I have a lot to share, a yeah. lot to say. I'm just not exactly sure when it will come out. But Well, I think James is probably going to be playing whatever you release next. He says, our, um, our recovery church in Lake Worth appreciates you as our worship arts band plays your song. Oh, it's our worship arts band. That's awesome. I love that. That's so cool. Um, I've got some questions from some people here. And yeah, Giovanna says, what is her go-to verse in the stage of life and why? Wow. That's a great question. I think, okay. So you said to show one thing, but I'm going to show this other thing too. So I have this on my wall right now. Oh yeah. Still. God, and it's from Psalm 46. 10, and I look at it every day because it's definitely what I need to hear right now. Um, just in this season of college and school, it feels hard to be still. Um, but I need to be, and we all need to be, because if we're just busy and we're not listening, then we're not going to hear the voice of God. That's just kind of how he works. He speaks in whispers. And so um, just reminding myself to be still and know that God has already figured out what I'm doing with my life. He has already figured out what is next. I don't have to worry about tomorrow. I don't have to worry how things are going to go because he knows and I trust him fully. Um, and so just resting in the fact that I can be still and know that God is fighting my battles and that he already knows what's going to happen. And yeah, that's been my life first for the past probably four years. And um, yeah, I think I'll that. always need it. I think I'll always need a reminder. Yeah. To be still. Thanks for the question, Giovanna. And uh, this is just a comment. God bless you, Hannah. A song filled with the Bible lasts forever. Uh, this is Emmanuel from Ghana watching right now. So it's awesome. Oh, thanks so much for watching. That's so Yeah, awesome. so cool. And so cool. let's see, got something else. Oh, it looks like a lot of people are wondering about touring. Uh, it, what what does it look like? What's next for you touring-wise? So I leave a week from tomorrow to go on a Christmas tour with Casting Crowns. Oh, well, perfect. You'll get to hear those songs every night. I know. I'm so <laughs> excited. Um, it's all on the West Coast, which is a little bit unusual, but we're coming to Seattle Portland. We're going to Canada. I'm excited. British Columbia. Are you um, skipping us? You're not skipping us, are you? Boise. <laughs> no. Um, so, and then San Diego, um, Los Angeles. So it'll be, it'll be cool. I love the West coast. I don't That's get awesome. out very much. So I'm excited about that. And then I have a show in Florida in December. Um, I'm going to be on TV in Virginia, but other than that, yeah. I don't really have a lot scheduled right now. Um, but there will be things coming for sure, especially once I graduate college, because yeah. it's just really hard to tour when I'm in school full time because I actually have to go to class sometimes. <laughs> yeah, so, yeah, that's that's absolutely true. How, do, how does all that work? Like, do you do online classes? Are you able to just are they just super flexible? What, what is that like? Well, so I don't do any online classes um, because Belmont doesn't really offer a lot. Okay. Um, so everything is in person and it is difficult because like school has to be a priority and professors yeah. want it to be your priority. And I get that. Um, and I, it's also hard to explain like, Hey, I'm doing exactly what I'm going to be doing. <laughs> the rest of my life. Like, you know, yeah. Um, but most of them do understand and they're very gracious and they allow me to miss as much as they can like let me based on the university rules. Yeah. Um, and a lot of times too, like I try not to schedule classes on Friday. And so I don't miss a ton, like, especially if I am done with school on Thursdays and I can be gone Friday, Saturday, Sunday, and be back Monday. Um, That's and so a lot of them are super understanding and because I'm in the college of theology and all of these people that are teaching me like love the Lord, it's not hard to explain to them why I want to do this. Right. I feel called. So it's usually a conversation that I stress out about a lot more than I need sure. to before yeah. it happens. 
And then it happens. I'm like, oh my gosh, of course, like they would understand. And yeah. So it's not easy. And I think I, you know, have missed out on some stuff in college, but I've gained so much more with everything I've been able to do with music. I'm so blessed yeah. to get to do so. Everything has, you know, parts of parts that you give up, but it's so worth it. And I'm very grateful. Did I, are you involved at a local church as well? Yeah, I lead worship every Sunday at Brentwood Baptist Church. Um, we have a service in a place called Hudson Hall, and it's kind of like a contemporary, um, a contemporary service. We have tables, there's coffee. Um, it's very relaxed and inviting to people yeah. who maybe like didn't grow up in the church or yeah, but also my parents go. So it's very like age yeah. friendly and um, it's a great service. I really, that's kind of the thing that feels constant for me, no matter what I'm doing in school or in music. Like I always know I have my church at home that I can yeah. be worship at and be with people who have done life with me and um, encourage me. So it's, it's been good to be able to do that. And also reminds me that like, I'm just a person and I'm serving because God's called me to do this, not because I'm the best singer or the best writer, but because like I'm doing this for a higher purpose and it really is ministry and not, you know, it's not about me. And yeah. that just reminds me of that. So I always want to do that for sure. I love that. I, I, I love seeing like people be able to artists really being able to pour into their communities and that being like a life giving thing to them and mm -hmm. to where it's not like another job where it's like a, like it fills them up. And I, I think yes. that's cool. And I think it's, probably essential for you in the in the season you're in uh my mom has a question that she asks everybody and that is do you have a dog i bet you don't in your dorm <laughs> i don't have my dorm but i do have a dog and he is my child like oh so he's eight years old um his name is baxter, oh, baxter. he's literally the most human-like dog i've ever met in my life <laughs> like, what kind of dog is it um he's a havanese so he's kind of a smaller medium-sized dog um mm -hmm. he looks like like maybe a Maltese or like a Shih Tzu if you yeah. ever yeah. Um, He kind of is like that, but he's so smart. Like <laughs> if you, he has like 60 toys. I know my mom spoils him. And like, if you say, go get like one specific toy, he will get yeah. that. Oh, and, nice. Like, oh, say she loves it. There you go. That's oh. my mom. <laughs> that's, the, that, that's her question <laughs> uh, finally how can all of us be praying for you that are watching tonight oh all the prayers i always need them um i think just praying for rest and um praying for perseverance just because i'm about to enter a really busy season um going on the road for two weeks and then i yeah. come back i take a red eye flight all night long and i come back to take all my final exams that day um, and so I guess just be praying that I'm able to persevere through that time and just find pockets of rest. Um, and then also just pray that the Lord would use me for purposes that are even greater than I can see and um, just draw hearts close to him with the things that he's given me to say, because that's why I want to do this, not to be famous or to have number one songs, but just so that people can encounter Jesus. And yeah, so just be praying that he would use me in any way that he sees fit. Yeah, awesome. Well, let's do that. If you guys are watching now or later, of course, you know it works the same. So we're going to pray for Hannah while we have her. Lord, we just uh, we just thank you so much. Um, we just thank you for, for Hannah as a, as a role model, as a servant of you, as someone who um, has uh, sold out to you in, in so many different ways, in every way, Lord. And we just pray um, that, you would strengthen her, that you would, um, that you would help her with the logistical details that uh, can, can sometimes probably be overwhelming, Lord. And we just pray that you would make, you would make joy overflow in each of the areas that she's operating in, Lord. We just thank you for the foundation that you've given her, uh, from her family to uh, what's going on at school, uh, to the community of artists and her church that's around her, Lord. We just thank you for that, and we pray that that would strengthen her in the times where things feel uh, a little crazy. And Lord, we just uh, we just also pray that you would you continue to shape her focus and shape her perspective on what she does and why she does it. Um, Lord, that you would you continue to surprise her with the things that you have for her and the results, um, God, that you you want to draw people to you. And so, Lord, we just thank you that you want to use her to do it. So, God, we just pray uh, for this Christmas season that this tour would be um, 
would be just refreshing and would be um, significant in so many ways, not just for the people that hear the music, but for the artists on tour as well. I uh, pray that you move strongly um, in, in those shows. And uh, we just, we thank you for, for what's to come. And we pray all this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Marcus. Yeah, absolutely. And it's it's going to be, this is awesome. You get to go do your new Christmas songs. You get to be with casting crowns. Go to, yeah. the, go to some warm places. I mean, yeah. you're talking about L.A. and Florida. Like, man. It's very it's, great. I mean, it's kind of like the opposite. Like in the summertime, you're singing about Christmas. In the winter, you're going to LA and Florida. I, I, you're just going to be all messed up. It's going to be like you, you're going to be looking for football in March or something. You know, like. Yes, I'm be all messed up. I don't even know. Well, that's awesome. Well, best to you. Have an incredible end of your term and tests and all those things, and uh, and, and have such a great tour. So. So to uh, to find out where you're going, it's hannahkerrmusic.com, yes? Yes. All right, and you can go there, and you can also find out uh, wherever you do the whole music thing. You can get the new Christmas Eve in Bethlehem EP. It's out on all the platforms, yeah? It is. You can find it anywhere you get music. Will you have physical copies out on the road? I will, and actually you can buy physical copies too online now. So At, the, at this site? At right this there. Site. Right, there it right is. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, right there. Awesome. Okay. Well, uh, cool. And if you, you know, lots of people wondering where you're coming, that's where you get all the tour dates and all that stuff. So keep tabs. I'm sure she'll be adding stuff super soon. And 2019 is going to be, it's going to be a massive year for you. Like, yeah, I'm excited. Finishing up college and, and then you're, it's like you're, you'll be running without weights on. Like, it's going to be, it's gonna gonna be gonna awesome. Well, so, cool. Well, thanks for spending the time with us. We we will do this again. I know we will. And I uh, always and, love hanging out with you, Marcus. Yes, awesome. And uh, have have a happy Thanksgiving. You too. Happy Thanksgiving, everyone watching too. I hope you have a great time. All right. Take care. God bless. All right. That's what we've got for today. There you go. There's the site, Hannah Kerr Music. Uh, you can find out more about her if you are still getting to know who she is. Hey, I would start with the song Warrior. It's pretty amazing. But, of course, now we're getting into Christmas mode, so you go go check out that Christmas in Bethlehem, Christmas Eve in Bethlehem EP. Um, it's it's going to be an awesome week. We're doing Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday because I think all of you are pretty much busy Thursday. I know I am. And uh, tomorrow we've got Becca Shea. I'm so excited. One of my favorite vocalists. Um, she's got some Christmas tunes, too. We're in that season, guys. And then we'll have David Dunn. Uh, BEC recording artist David Dunn will be here on Wednesday, same time, 8 p.m. Eastern, 5 p.m. Pacific. If you missed this episode or any of them, you can go to ccmmagazine.com, click the Live with Marcus tab, or go over to iTunes and search for CCM Magazine. You can find our podcast, the audio version of this. You don't get to see the dance moves. Um, so, we're, And we're also on YouTube, too. So if you look for CCM Magazine on YouTube, you'll find it there. All right, that's what we've got for today. Thank you for being here. If you liked what you saw, tag someone, comment, share, and do it again tomorrow, okay? All right, good night, everybody. <laughs>